More than 27,000 people are now said to have been killed since the crisis in Syria began last year. Now categorised as a civil war, the violence has germinated sectarianism between groups that until now lived peacefully for centuries. It is into this maelstrom that the United Nations International Peace Envoy Lakhda Brahimi arrived, the replacement to Kofi Annan, who resigned from the post. A former foreign minister to Algeria and Under Secretary General for the Arab League, Mr. Brahimi is an experienced operator in Arab and Muslim countries. His mission to bring peace in Syria, however, has been described by the man himself as nearly impossible. Well, journalist and fellow Algerian Nabila Ramdani can shed some light on what Mr. Brahimi may bring to such a difficult situation. She joins us now in the studio here in Midori House. And Babak Degan Shipe, who's covering the Syrian conflict for the Washington Post from Beirut, also joins us on the line. Thank you uh, both for joining us. Let me start by asking you, uh, Nabila, to describe really a bit about the, the clout that uh, Brahimi carries with him. I mean, we, we know his, the esteem with which he's held uh, it, with uh, the US and uh, in other uh, Western capitals, but uh, in terms of uh, the region that he's going to be really dealing with, how respected is he? Well, he's a very respected uh, figure indeed because he, he he's no stranger to leading UN missions in, in the Arab world in particular. And he's first and foremost an Algerian nationalist. And it has to be noted that his political formation started in the course of the struggle of independence of his own country uh, from France. And his formative years have been uh, throughout uh, this uh, struggle. He uh, took on several jobs uh, representing the Algerian government uh, to begin with. He worked worked as um, uh, you know an advisor to the president but he was also uh, an ambassador he, he spent an awful lot of time in the, in the Arab world, uh, in Egypt, in Sudan, mm. and, and indeed in the UK. And, and that's something that uh, people are not necessarily aware of. How would you characterise his diplomatic style? Is he very uh, straight talking or, you know, how does he get the job done? Well, he has been. And I think his choice as a, the new uh, UN and indeed Arab League uh, envoy to Syria is understandable because he, he has considerable experience experience as a negotiator in difficult situations and especially with regards to uh, Syria. He, for example, put together the Taif Accords in 1989, which helped to put an end to the Lebanese civil war and indeed begin the disengagement of Syrian forces uh, from Lebanon. So it's not his first difficult task with this country Mm. in particular. But he also, uh, has to be said, he admitted to a failing often, and especially over Iraq, where he was a UN special envoy, and uh, he uh, submitted his, reg- his resignation out of frustration mm. because of the uh, difficulty of setting up free and fair elections. Babak, um, may, I, may we ask, um, what has been the reaction to this man's appointment and subsequent arrival in Syria? Well, I don't... Uh, see that there's been a huge reaction on uh, either side, either from the Syrian government or the opposition. Um, you know, both of the positions uh, on either side are very uh, sort of hardened uh, at this point. There doesn't uh, really seem to be any common ground from which Mr. Brahimi could start any kind of a diplomatic process at this point. Um, we, we reached a point where, uh, you know, 100 up to 200 people or more killed per day is, uh, is basically the average. And, uh, you know, if anything, before any sort of diplomatic track starts, you really have to stop this violence. And, um, you know, it's, it's really hard to see how, uh, how Mr. Brahimi could achieve that. It's, it, it really is a monumentally difficult task. Is there a sense, Babak, that uh, Brahimi's presence is going to mark some form of uh, landmark shift, though, in the UN stance when it comes to Syria? Well, it doesn't really seem like a, a big shift. Uh, you know, the UN ha- hasn't disengaged. I mean, the, the peacekeepers that were in the country have uh, have pulled out, and I think that uh, that perhaps sends a stronger message than uh, than the arrival of Mr. Brahimi. When when the peacekeepers, because of the high level of violence, removed themselves from the country, I think both sides understood that uh, to some extent the UN had um, you know had disengaged and uh, uh, at least uh, in an observer status, and um, you know. The, Both parties are are just kind of uh, going at it in terms of uh, just fighting things out at the moment. Nabila, what would you say to that? Is this man now shouting in a vacuum? 
Well, I think so. I mean, as someone who speaks to uh, Syrians uh, day in, day out almost, there's very much uh, a sense that a diplomatic mission at this stage is far little and far too late. And there are many, in fact, who doubt the ability of um, the UN to negotiate a solution uh, to the problem. Uh, and to be successful, Brahimi will need to find a strategy for transforming the mentalities of both uh, the major world powers and indeed the rival factions in Syria, which is an absolute impossible mission. It is impossible. Where does he begin with that? There is uh, an, there is uh, undoubtedly a, a major uh, political deadlock with uh, major powers like China and Russia who absolutely refuse to give up their alliance with, uh, with Syria. And uh, I think it has to be said that the precedent said in Libya where the UN secured legitimately a resolution to uh, protect civilian lives and then of course the mission turned into mission creep and then to regime change uh, that's, uh, you know, we're talking not just about a, a problem specific to Syria, but a regional problem and indeed the role and the place of world powers like China, Russia and indeed the US. Mm, you, you talked there about uh, him having to change the uh, Western perceptions of, of what's going on. Obviously, that's one side of it, but he's actually headed to Damascus on the other side. I mean, how much realistically can he hope to achieve there? Well, I think... In the light of the recent events in, in Libya and indeed the murder of uh, US officials, uh, the fears and the concern about what could come next if Assad were to go have uh, come to the fore even more. And there is, uh, you know, uh, increasingly reports about the Free Syrian Army, which ha is becoming a bit unpalatable in the sense that they are using the same tactics as the Assad regime. And there are now more reports coming out about, you know, the use of torture, for example, and then that kind of uh, things that are, um, you know, uh, surely any uh, Western government wouldn't want, or indeed any regional government wouldn't want the Free Syrian Army to be in charge of, of Syria. Babak, what would you say to that um, position that the Free Syrian Army is not necessarily yet a credible opposition? Well, I think there's, uh, you know, there's enough evidence to, uh, to support that. I mean, uh, at the very least, there are videos that uh, fighters from the Free Syrian Army themselves or, or opposition activists have posted to the Internet showing uh, the Free Syrian Army members executing uh, people uh, who are sympathizers with the regime, or uh, just just uh, in the past week, there was a very gruesome video of a number of regime soldiers that were shown that were uh, lined up and executed on a street corner in uh, in the western portion of the country. So, yes, I mean by no means are uh, are these guys, uh, you know, sort of uh, by the book uh, Democrats or or you know sort of your your perfect um, heroes. But um, you know, at, at the moment, I think the scale of the atrocities or, or the um, war crimes committed by the regime do, um, do outweigh what, uh, what the rebels have, have committed so far. And Babak, Brahimi has made no secret of the fact that he hasn't always thought of the UN in the most uh, glowing terms. I mean, do you, do you think that he's going to manage to um, square that circle? Well, he's certainly taken off, uh, you know, taken on a number of difficult missions in the past in uh, Iraq and Afghanistan, and he is a uh, very well-respected uh, figure on the world stage. Uh, you know, possibly only second to uh, Kofi Annan, which is, you know, perhaps the, the reason that he, that he was appointed. So, he, you know, he does bring a lot of clout to this position. Uh, frankly, he is probably the only person left that would uh, even consider taking this job on. So. You know, I, I think there is, uh, again, he, he does bring that to the table, and if, if anybody could pull it off, it would probably be him. And staying with you, Babak, the recent events in the Middle East, in Cairo and Libya, in Yemen, um, how much harder has this man's job suddenly become? I think it's become a great deal, uh, yeah, a great deal harder. Uh, you know, just in the past couple of days, the, uh, the uh, degree of... Um, you know, the, this uh, Western animosity against the West, against the U.S., and, and, you know, the reaction to that, which is going to be reluctance from, uh, from Western countries to really kind of uh, find uh, a settlement that would, uh, you know, perhaps remove Mr. Assad. Uh, as your guest mentioned earlier, I think the, the idea of a power vacuum in Syria is really going to be uh, spooking a lot of uh, the Western countries, particularly the U.S., and, uh, you know, especially because there are these signs that there are, you know, some radical Islamic elements within the, uh, the Syrian rebel factions. So, uh, yeah, I think it does, uh, it does complicate the, uh, the issue a lot more. 
And Nabila, finally, I just wanted to ask, I mean, it's a theoretical question, but looking six months, maybe a year down the line, how do you think uh, Mr Brahimi's success will be judged? What are the criteria by which it will be judged, whether he has had any impact at all? I don't think that judgment will be passed on on the person that he is or or, or indeed on or, on his credibility. I think uh, people will look at it in the light of the timing uh, when he was sent and 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 that says it all really because he was sent at the moment where the diplomatic uh, diplomatic attempts to sort out the situation uh, came far too late. Nabila Ramdami and Babak Degashi